Mm. Focus looks pretty good. Zoom in, 35 millimeters. How would this look like if you vlogged or um, filmed talking head videos like this? So, so uncomfortably close up. Anyway, steady friends, we're talking about a cinema zoom lens, specifically the Fujinon MK18 to 55. Now, doing a little walk and talk with this one because that's, you know, what I'm pretty decent at is walk and talks. But the Fujinon MK18 to 55, right? Right now I'm filming on the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8. Pretty sure most of you have one or, you know, um, a lens similar to that, right? What makes a difference between purchasing a cinema zoom lens versus a more affordable uh, SLR lens, right? Something like the 18 to 35 is $500, $600. The Fujinon MK18 to 55 is about $3,799. That's for the E mount, right? It comes natively with an E mount. Uh, Fujinon does now have a micro four thirds mount, uh, but at the time that I purchased mine, I went through Duclos lenses to buy a uh, an E-mount to Micro Four Thirds adapter. That's how I use it on the Pocket 4K. That's how I use it on, on the GH5, right? So in actuality, I spent like four, $4,000, right? Is that something that you want to spend or could you possibly still use just your regular um, SLR zoom lenses, your 24 to 70, 24 to 105, 18 to 35, so on and so on. So what exactly do you get um, with a Fujinon MK18 to 55, right? Or any kind of a zoom lens. Uh, city zoom lens. You get a 180 degree focus throw, which is great for smooth operation. Um, that way you kind of get away from the SLR zoom lens rotating like left, right, left, right. Uh, and you kind of see it and it's really hard to, to nail your focus. You also get a T2.9 aperture, um, which is pretty fast for, for a cinema zoom lens. Um, you know, it's about the same same thing as like your, your f1.8, um, f2 uh, for SLR lenses. You also get a pretty gnarly zoom, right? 18 to 55 on a micro four thirds, like no speed booster, is a 33 to 101, uh, 101 millimeter lens, right? So wide enough, 33 millimeters, you know, for your uh, semi-establishing shots, but like medium shots. And the 101, that's pretty good for like close-ups, um, in some instances, extreme close-ups. Uh, you know, say if you're filming like a documentary, uh, uh, an event, anything like that where you can't, you know, change what's happening, you have to just go with what's happening. Uh, getting into 101 millimeters, pretty darn good. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, why would you want to spend so much money on a cinema zoom lens, right? Why can't you use your 18 or 35, your regular uh, mirrorless or SLR uh, lenses? Well, a lot of it really comes down to your, your mode of operation, right? Like how do you typically uh, film? Are you a one man band? Are you um, a solo operator? Do you work with uh, two people all the time, three people all the time, uh, five people all the time, right? It really depends. I gotta change, gotta change my exposure a little bit. Bring this back, not there, yeah. You know, so you have to really ask yourself, um, what kind of crew do you run with? Can you use a cinema lens that, you know, if you don't have a wireless follow focus, you have to focus yourself. Um, if you don't have a first AC, someone helping you to pull focus, how are you going to you know, manage what's, uh, what's in your frame? My friends, really at the end of the day, it's simply a tool, right? Your lens, your camera, uh, your lights, the audio equipment you use, right? These are all tools to help you tell uh, the best story. The reason why I chose to go with the Fujinon MK18 and 55 is for me, I wanted to um, have a set of lenses, a zoom lens or two, um, as well as prime lenses that could uh, more or less like match each other pretty well. You know, when it comes to like bokeh, when it comes to out of, um, out of focus elements, when it comes to having a fast enough T-stop or aperture when I need to film in lower light uh, scenarios or maybe like close-up scenarios. Um, you know, for me, the SLR Magic lenses, I have the prime lenses, uh, 25, 35, 50, right? I wanted something at the wider end, but also something that I knew for, for documentaries, for event films, um, I didn't have, I don't have the luxury of switching out lenses, you know? I'm, I'm not saying you can't, I'm not saying it's impossible, but for me, for my style of filming, what I've noticed and what, what experience has taught me is any moment that you put down the camera is an opportunity for you to lose a shot, right? So having a cine zoom, again, 33 millimeters on micro four thirds, uh, well, specifically the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, right? You gotta factor in the 1.85 times crop. It's a 33, this guy here, right? This guy here. This is a 33 millimeter to 101 
millimeter lens, as I said before, right? So that's pretty darn good. I'm get my focus back in, y'all. Cool. Now, switching focus, say if you don't want to shoot um, or you're adding on to, to your portfolio, like music videos, uh, maybe you're filming uh, like sports, right? Uh, you're filming uh, some narrative content or branded content where you need uh, full coverage, right? Your wide, medium, uh, and tights. You have one lens that does all of that for you. You have a lens with medium contrast, um, with a with a fast T-stop, and also a wide uh, wide coverage where you don't have to change your lenses off, right? And also smooth smooth operation, right? 180 degrees is not a lot compared to. Um... Here, hold on. All right, so we got here are two lenses, right? These are from SLR Magic. Uh, this isn't an SLR Magic sponsored video. This is about a cinema zoom lens, right? But what I wanted to talk about is focus throw. Right here is the SLR Magic uh, 50 millimeter T2.1. They're APL lens, right? This is designed for uh, for PL mount and also for a Canon EF mount. Um, but this has a full 300 degree rotation throw, right? Meaning if I want to go from infinity all the way to uh, close focus, Look how, long, look how long this takes, right, with my hand, right? So imagine yourself filming a music video, filming a wedding, filming a documentary, uh, filming your, your, your short film, your feature film, filming your dog, your cat. I'm still talking, right? You're filming the trees outside, and then you get to um, uh, close focus distance, right? That's a lot if you're just filming by yourself, right? Uh, the micro primes aren't too bad, right? These have 150 degree rotation throw. Uh, so this is for Micro Four Thirds. They make them also for E-mount and uh, Fuji Fuji X-mount. Uh, this is a 25 millimeter T1.5, right? So for me to go from infinity all the way to close focus, right? I'm turning in, I'm turning in and filming my trees, my dog, my cat, boom close focus distance, right? That's what you get when it comes to using cinema lenses. Um, so this is 150 degree rotation. The Fuji MK18-55 is a 180 degree rotation, right? So just a little bit more than this guy here, which means you get fine control over your focus, right? Fine control from racking focus from, uh, say, one person talking and then going to the next person talking, right? Maybe uh, you have a, someone coming into frame, right? You can able, you're able to track them with granular control, rather than with the SLR lenses, like with the 18 to 35, you have to like play around with it and you have to like really kind of just keep tweaking it, right? This gives you specific control. So final thoughts, right? If you need to uh, move into the realm of cinema lenses, if you already have a set of cinema lenses or modified old vintage lenses, you want something um, in the realm that's gonna be able to bring value to your business, to your clients, to to your productions, right? And for me, the Fuji 18-55 has brought a ton, a ton of value, right? I know it costs a lot for a lens, right? But comparatively, if you look at like like Zeiss Otis lenses or Milbus lenses, um, freaking even like the, the Canon RF lenses, right? Or Canon L glass, you're spending like $2,000 or $3,000, right? So for you to spend $3,800 or $4,000 on a quality cinema lens from a company that uh, not only is a quality company, but one that's been around for a long as time, Fujinon, Fuji Films, right? Um, I think it's actually worth it. That being said, friends, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the MK18-55, or if you have any other questions regarding the lens, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it. And remember friends, every day you have an opportunity to create your experience and to write and tell your own story. My name is David Lee, and I will catch you guys in the next video.